Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. And good afternoon, everyone. Phil Panarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're all having a great start to your Wednesday. Once again, News 8 digital reporter Matt Jarowski is here to really go more in depth on one of his news stories that came out earlier this morning. It is all part of our Earth Day coverage. Again, another look at an endangered species here in the state of Michigan. Matt, how are you doing this morning? Doing great, Phil. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about the northern long-eared bat today. Uh, pretty used to be pretty prevalent in Michigan. Population is starting to decline quite a bit, but Matt, let's just get a little bit of background on this animal. What is the northern long-eared bat? Give us some of its characteristics. Yeah, the northern long-eared bat uh, has a pretty wide range across uh, the United States and into Canada. Um, it's one of several bat species that is currently being impacted uh, by the specific fungus that causes something called white nose syndrome. Um, so it's infecting a, a lot of bats, uh, but the northern long-eared bat specifically is, is really struggling with this fungus. Um, more the common, the, the little brown bat and those kind of things. Uh, those kind of creatures have about a 90% fatality rate, so nine in 10 of them die from this fungus once they get infected. The northern long-eared bat, it's even worse. It's about 99%, so only one in 100 actually survive. Mm -hmm. Right now, and I want to remind everybody that is watching right now, you can check out Matt's story that goes really more in depth on this entire phenomenon of the long-eared bat, as well as the fungus that is impacting them right now. It's over on our website, woodtv.com. But let's focus a little bit onto that fungus now, Matt. It's got yeah. an incredibly long and difficult to pronounce name. Um, but talk about yeah. the, just <laughs> like the difficulty uh, these bats are having with it. I think you spoke with uh, one official that said that about 95% of the long-eared bats have been killed off by this fungus recently and just you know what is it that is impacting these bats so much right so it's a fungus that came over I believe from Europe uh, I think it was first found stateside around 2006 and then has been slowly spreading west um, so it was first discovered in Michigan around 2014 uh, and it's expected to cover the entire range by 2030 which is a major problem it's moving pretty quickly uh, like you said, approximately only 5% of the northern long-eared bat population is still alive. We lost those 95% just in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. So they're really hanging on, uh, kind of looking for any sort of answer, specifically in the western parts of the region, which are up like uh, Utah, Wyoming, and up into Canada over there, where the fungus hasn't really quite settled in yet. Mm -hmm. And do researchers kind of understand why this is so damaging to the bats? Is it just the bacteria that's in that fungus impacting them? Is there something else that maybe they're trying to figure out? Yeah, it's kind of, it's a mix of things, but primarily how this fungus works uh, is it uh, grows, it, it thrives in the cold, which um, that's Michigan. You may, you, yeah. <laughs> West Michigan definitely has its cold. Um, but so when these bats hibernate over the winter, uh, they get infected with this fungus, whether it's just a, it's on the cave walls or wherever they're hibernating. Um, and it grows on their body. And what this does is it disrupts their hibernation schedule, uh, causes them to stir a lot more and wake up, um, which is not the scientific term, but that's what we'll go with here. Mm -hmm. uh, and so basically what, what happens is because they have to spend all this extra energy um, interrupting its hibernation pattern, they run out of their uh, energy storage before spring and pass away. Mm -hmm. Right, now, and of course, as the is in a lot of your stories specifically with these there uh, you touched on a lot of the conservation efforts that yeah. are going on to try and rescue this population and researchers actually made a pretty important discovery recently about a subsection of these long-eared bats that are seem to be immune to this fungus can you touch on a little mm -hmm. bit about that and what researchers hope to gain from this subsection to really bring up the population numbers right so there is a, a one of the quotes I got from, uh, her name was Winifred Frick, she's one of the lead scientists for Bat Conservation International, and she admitted uh, that things look pretty grim for this bat. We, there's no clear answer yet, and they don't know if they're gonna be able to save it. However, there is a ray of hope, and it just so happens to be here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. There's a bat population uh, in Manistee County um, where they hibernate uh, at a facility at Tippy Dam. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the northern long-eared bats uh, are dealing with the fungus there, but they're they're managing to survive their battles with it. Um, there, you know, every winter, every hibernation cycle, some do invariably die from the fungus, but most of them do survive. And so researchers are really uh, 
pinpointing on Tippy Dam to try to figure out what are the characteristics of this specific location or of these bats that are allowing them to survive their interactions uh, with these infections. So there's a lot of, uh, they're testing this in a couple of ways. They're running experiments right now. Um, I believe in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. where they took bats specifically from Tippy Dam and then other bats from other origins where we know they struggled with the infections. Try to figure out if there are genetic differences that are making these bats uh, more immune or, or stronger to these infections, or if it's specific um, characteristics of the dam facility itself. One thing that uh, researchers noted is that unlike most places, most bats, they want to find somewhere that is pitch dark, cold, so they can totally shut down. They sneak into their little uh, rock crevices to try to spend the winter. Mm -hmm. Tippy Dam is a little different because uh, unlike those most underground areas, uh, they are exposed to some sunlight, which keeps them on a, keeps them on a bit of a 24-hour rhythm as far as sun up and sun down. And so one uh, researcher hypothesized that that is the reason why these bats are able to survive because it's not that just that the bats hibernation cycles are interrupted like, like these bats are when they're infected. It's that they all, because of the light, um, are stirring at the same time and they're using each other's body warmth. Um, instead of like one being active at one time, everyone's active at the same time and they think that that, that uh, stored body heat mm -hmm. could be the key to saving enough energy to survive that winter. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely gonna be very interesting to keep up with this story and see if there is a way to bring back the northern long-eared bat. Matt, mm -hmm. again, this is the third story in a five-part series that is ha coming out every single day this week. Uh, you will be back again tomorrow at noon on the live desk to discuss tomorrow's endangered species. Can you give us a little bit of a tease about what we're going to be talking about tomorrow? Yep. Uh, tomorrow we're dealing with a specific type of snake uh, that was once super common across the Midwest and is now considered endangered. Uh, or Excuse me, they are not considered endangered. And that is part of the problem. That's the big story. Uh, there are conservation groups that are actually filing lawsuits mm -hmm. against federal agencies to try to get them added to the endangered species list, arguing that these snakes need our help now more than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a little bit of additional context for that story will be needed. And, of course, you can find all of Matt's pieces all week long over on our website, woodtv.com, including today's topic, which was the northern long-eared bat. And we also talked about the lake sturgeon on Tuesday, mm -hmm. as well as the plover on Monday. Matt, as always, thank you so much for coming on the live desk. We really do appreciate it. Anytime, Phil. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Panarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.